Hello everyone and welcome to this podcast brought to you by Continuity and Resilience which we refer to for short as CORE. This episode is from one of our previous global online summits. I found the content so fascinating that I just wanted to share it with you. I am today in conversation with Ted Brown who was elected to the Contingency Planning and Management Hall of Fame in 2002. Ted is also a winner of the DRI Lifetime Achievement Award as well as Consultant of the Year. In this episode, Ted shares with us how he helped his university, Penn State, put in place an organized response to the effects of the pandemic. At that time, Ted was possibly one of the only BCM professionals to be on the board of a major US university. It may have helped that the university had been running an online distance program for many years. Even then, it sounds like a fantastic achievement that on day one, they held over 600 Zoom classes to cover 66,000 students. What I personally found fascinating in this video is how Ted very simply explains how he put a logical step-by-step -step process in place to manage the pandemic impacts. Even though this response was for a university, I'm sure others from other industries could equally learn from this and take away some smart thoughts and ideas. So happy learning and let's hear what Ted has to say. Hi, I'm Ted Brown, an alumni elected member of the Penn State Board of Trustees, where I serve as the chairman and founder of the Risk Subcommittee and also vice chairman of the Audit and Risk Committee. I'd like to share with you today the, the successes that Penn State's had since the coronavirus hit, what the things we put in place and the lessons that we've learned. And hopefully those lessons are going to be things that you can apply to your business. Penn State has 24 campuses across the Commonwealth. We're the only land-grant university in Pennsylvania. And every one of those campuses had a, has a model of the original Nittany Lion that you've all heard about. This is the one that was done by Heinz Warnicke in the 30s, and it's known as the Lion Shrine. At those 24 campuses, we have almost 100,000 students. By the way, that number is about what it was last year. We only had a small decline due to the pandemic mostly because of international students not being able to get into the country. So I'm here to report things are going pretty well in spite of the pandemic. In addition to those 100,000 students, we have 17,000 faculty and staff in those 24 campuses. In May, we had to do commencement virtually and then again in August. And I came over here to take some pictures with a lion and I was fortunate enough to meet Emily Lundstrom who got her master's in uh, kinesiology and graduated virtually just in August. And so say hello to Emily. Hello, Emily. Say hello. Hi. Great. The first strategy is coordinating with local officials. So the university's student affairs, strategic communications and government relations departments met with leaders from the boroughs and the chancellors at our Commonwealth campuses met with their local uh, constituencies to communicate recommendations for the students in their housing and apartments. For example, the cooperation is illustrated by the borough passing an ordinance on August 4th that requires people wearing masks within proximity of the campus. In April of this year, we put three task forces in place, one focused on students, one focused on staff, and one focused on faculty, all with the goal of putting in place procedures that we could put everybody back in the classrooms. And the goal was to have this work done by June 15th. All of the task force group efforts were based on public health and scientific guidelines. And remember, as I said earlier, Penn State's campuses are in 24 locations across the Commonwealth. And the goal of all this work was to be done by June 15th. On June 15th, President Eric Barron announced the plans to resume on-campus work, teaching, and learning, with the fall semester to begin on Monday, August 24th, which it did, and the in-person instruction to end the week before Thanksgiving on November 20th, with the completion of the semester being handled remotely. Mask wearing and social distancing were emphasized, and we looked at the buildings and their capacities it turned out that 70% of our classrooms couldn't be used because we couldn't get the uh, social distancing that we needed. And we also put in place a very extensive contact tracing program. 
the takeaway from this, the thing that you should learn for your business is that one size does not fit all in terms of geographies. So we had to look at a county by county approach because of those 24 locations. On July 15th, Penn State put in place the COVID Operational Control Center, headed by, headed by Kelly Wolgast. And, and when I heard that announcement, I personally have to tell you I was excited because Kelly's got an amazing background for this. She's got her PhD in nursing. She's a former Army, Army bird colonel and has dealt with crises in many occasions. And the lesson I hope you take away from this is that perhaps in addition to your normal incident command team, you might want to put in place a specialized incident command, command team like Penn State did. For example, if your organization gets hacked, uh, a command team that's headed by your CIO. The COVID-19 Operation Control Center was measuring data and in fact is the source of our now published daily dashboard. And the lesson to learn from this, the takeaway, is that in your business, a specialized incident command team may be appropriate. For example, if the crisis is your business being hacked, perhaps the CIO is the chairman of that particular incident command team. The COCC's management by objectives included a lot of metrics, included issuing tasks, including measuring results. And I'm, I'd like to tell you one of the takeaways that I hope you would get from this is it's imperative that you have metrics when you're managing a crisis. And that's what we put in place with the COCC. The most important takeaway for you and for Penn State is that metrics are critical in measuring and managing a crisis. And so make sure that you have metrics in place. And one of those that we talk to about frequently is keeping track of expenses related to the COVID that may be reimbursable by some levels of insurance, although COVID insurance is not really available. But there also may, may be reimbursement by federal or state government. Penn State's strategies and plans for the fall of 2020 a lot of strategies were put in place. Strategies to make sure that students and faculty and staff were safe. Strategies to mitigate and contain the spread of the virus. Strategies to make sure we were successful. Coordinating with local health officials and other elected officials. At University Park, the Office of uh, Government Affairs, Student Affairs, and other groups met with the local officials and worked out strategies together. At, there are 20 plus Commonwealth campuses. The chancellors already have established relations with the local elected officials and first responders. And the message that I would give you to take away from this, you should have a working relationship with the first responders in your geography, no matter how many geographies that is. In fact, my experience is they are always happy to partic participate in exercises that test your plans and their plan to respond. Their job is to protect citizens, but it's also to help you protect your business. So keep that in mind, no matter what the disaster is. Let's discuss the strategies in place for monitoring a health environment. On June 30th, we announced our plans for contract tracing, and those plans have been put in place. We've also announced other plans to provide frequently asked question answers. And so that information is out on a variety of websites. There's also a lot of a posting of information on campus. For example, the big sign outside our basketball arena called the Bryce Jordan Center or the BJC, the big sign has flashing words that say, mask up or pack up. So the message is clear to the students, faculty, and staff. And the takeaway from what Penn State learned, it's imperative that you make changes in policy even cleaning and, and discipline, and buy-in is required for it to work. It's working. Because I live about five miles from the Penn State campus, I frequently drive on the campus, even though it may not be the shortest way to get to where I'm going, just to observe our students. And I started preparing this presentation back on Labor Day. And I'm proud to say, with very few exceptions, every time I see students, Include, including, every time I see students, including when I see them across the street 
in the downtown part of State College, I see students walking down the streets with masks on. So it is working. And I have to say, the two exceptions I saw on Labor Day both bothered me a lot because they were both families, clearly a mom and dad and college student walking around campus, and they were not wearing masks. So I'm happy to say that our students are setting a great example. And the lesson learned here is once you get buy-in, it's easily to implement programs. On June 30th, Penn State announced its contact tracing program and also its frequently asked questions programs for students, faculty, families, and the communities. Let's talk about strategies to mitigate the spread of the virus. Obviously, one of those is requiring everyone to wear masks at all times. It's required social distancing. It's providing professors and faculty the wherewithal to be able to discipline students that don't obey the rules. It's to provide over a million masks so, to, so that if a student forgets to bring them, that we can provide that. So it's a number of things that we're doing very successfully to mitigate the spread of the virus. One of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that Half the classes were planned to include in-person contact with students and faculty. But we did make some provisions for faculty and staff that they themselves may be in risk. And we also defined very well that faculty can take action if a student fails to adhere to the requirements. For example, if they come to class without a mask, we provide faculty with masks. If a student refuses to wear the mask, they will either been, be sent out of the class or the class may even be canceled. And we set aside a part of the campus called Eastview Terrace, a residence hall complex, for isolation. The message you can take away from what we learned, it is possible to put many people in a room safely with distancing, masking, and their appropriate cleanliness procedures. What better place to talk about communicating with students, faculty, and staff than in front of the Belisario College of Communications. Belisario, you know, like JAG, NCIS. Anyway, we've done a number of things to communicate with our constituents. President Barron has had a number of very successful town hall meetings, and I've attended some of those, and they're very well received, and the numbers support that. And we have a number of websites to provide information to all those constituents so that everybody can get current information about what's going on with COVID and other things on campus. We provided a number of websites and frequently asked questions and of course their answers for faculty, staff, and of course students and their parents. The message that I would hope you would take away is that it's important to com communicate with your constituency. It's important that your leaders, as in Penn State's case, the president, but in your case, it may be someone different. It's important that they frequently communicate with employees and stakeholders, including customers and others. And the various venues are critical to that communications. Penn State's Office of Strategic Communications put together a great marketing campaign to emphasize all the safety of protocols and that message was everywhere on every campus. Penn State's Office of Strategic Communications put together an excellent marketing campaign to emphasize the importance of masking and so forth. And we announced further strategies to educate the students and it's working. And remember, it's our community and our responsibility. The Interfraternity Council announced the cancellation of all social events for both fraternities and sororities for the entire fall yeah, semester. In addition, Vice President of Student Affairs, Damon Sims, sent a letter to all Greek undergraduate students, both fraternities and sororities, enumerating a number of the rules, including no socials and wearing masks at all times, to maintain personal hygiene, to follow all the rules, and realize that there are disciplinary actions if the rules aren't followed. Unfortunately, two fraternities did not follow the rules and the first week of school had parties and were put on probation. 
so that there must be consequences, but those consequences must be fair. In addition, we emphasize the need for fraternity and sorority members to fully cooperate with the university in terms of testing, contact tracing, quarantine and isolation. Quarantine and isolation was provided on campus, as I mentioned earlier, but also people were encouraged to isolate in their own premises, for example, in the fraternity and to stay home if they feel sick, to self-quarantine for at least seven days before returning, and in encourage your friends and brothers and sisters to join in to this fight against this disease. In July, we announced that the Big Ten football schedule would only be limited to Big Ten teams playing each other. Then a few weeks later, we announced that there would be no fans in the stadium. And then a couple weeks later, the Big Ten announced that we were going to defer all fall sports till next year. I thought another way to give you a perspective on what was happening at Penn State was to give you some headlines from our local daily newspaper called the Center Daily Times. Almost every day, because it is a college town, some event at Penn State was a headline in the front page of the paper. And here you see many examples during the period of a couple months. I hope today you've learned many lessons from Penn State's experience. Let's talk about some of those. One of the things that applies to your business that happened with, with us is the students really enjoyed the structured learning. Even though they were on Zoom, they could see their friends on Zoom. And it's important in terms of morale that you have events that aren't necessarily business but are social events so people can communicate. And I'll let you look at this list and Hopefully every one of the ones on this list of lessons learned applies to your business and will help you do a better job with this current crisis and the next one, because there will be a next one. Let me close with the other Ted Brown. Today I've talked to you as a Penn State trustee and the experience of Penn State. But I'd also like to point out, because this is after all the Disaster Recovery Journal Conference, that I'm also the president of Catch Consulting, a business continuity crisis management and communications firm. So we'd love to have you visit uh, our booth and talk to you, and I hope you do. It's Ted Brown at catchconsulting.com, spelled K-E-T-C-H, consulting.com. Thanks for your time, and, and enjoy the rest of the conference, and be safe. The presentation that we just uh, reviewed together was put in place on Labor Day as of two weeks ago tomorrow. So a lot has happened at Penn State in the last two weeks. For example, we quarantined three nursing students out of the 144 students to, because they tested positively and of course to protect the patients at Hershey. Since that time, they've all gone back to class, all 144 nurses. A moment ago, we talked about the Big Ten and Penn State suspending football. And we announced a week ago that, in fact, we are going to play a limited schedule starting October 23rd and 24th, eight games, four home, four away. I hope you found this information today useful. As you can tell, I'm a proud Penn Stater, and I hope the Penn State experience and success can help you in your daily life, both at home and in your work environment, whatever that may be. Thanks and be safe.